Interpreting the chest X-ray is an important skill for all critical care doctors. In intensive care, the X-ray may look quite complex and multiple pathologies may coexist, so a comprehensive analysis is required. The first priority is to check the patient's name, date and time on the film to ensure you're looking at the correct study. It is then important to review the quality of the chest X-ray. Sometimes technical limitations prevent the film from being optimal quality and this restricts the information that can be obtained. The standard chest X-ray is taken in the posteroanterior position such that the X-rays pass from the back of the patient to the front in the erect position. For various reasons, this may not always be practical in an unwell patient. When the X-ray is taken in the anteroposterior position, the heart and mediastinal structures are positioned further from the X-ray plate, resulting in magnification as the X-rays diverge. This limits inferences on the size of the heart. Similarly, when an X-ray is taken of the patient in the supine position, the mediastinal structures may appear wider as the structures fall out to the side rather than down due to gravity. Additionally, supine X-rays are taken with the X-ray box closer to the patient, resulting in a greater degree of magnification of the anterior structures. In a supine film, Fluid appears to spread uniformly across the film, altering the traditional appearances. For example, a pleural effusion will not collect at the bases, and upper zone pulmonary venous distension, characteristic of raised pulmonary venous pressures, will be present in everyone. The standard X-ray is taken in full inspiration. To check that the film is adequately inspired, the number of ribs visible above the diaphragm can be counted. You should be able to see at least 10 or 11 ribs arising from the vertebrae posteriorly above the diaphragm, or at least 6 costal cartilages anteriorly. If the film is inadequately inspired, conclusions about the mediastinal diameters are limited and lung parenchyma may appear to be more congested. This is particularly common in ICU patients as voluntary control of inspiration may be absent, the patient may be uncooperative or inspiration may be limited by postoperative pain or tachypnea. Film exposures are standardised to ensure consistency of imaging. By convention, a correctly exposed chest X-ray will enable you to just visualise the vertebral bodies through the cardiac structures, as seen here. Overpenetration will make the lungs look darker than they should be, and vice versa. The thoracic structures can appear different if the film is not taken from directly in front of the patient. A simple trick is to look at the spinous processes of the vertebral bodies, which should be halfway between the ends of the clavicles as shown here. It is clear from the above limitations that the normal chest x-ray in ICU is very different to the normal PA film. Experience in reviewing ICU patients and films is important. A simple process is to review the A, B, C, D, E's. Airways, breathing bits, cardiac and cardiovascular structures, diaphragms, equipment, and soft and hard tissues. Finally, it is important to have a second look at some common places the pathology hides. Look carefully at the trachea and the upper airways, looking for signs of distortion and displacement. Now examine the hyla. 
Look for enlargement or sudden cut-off, known as pruning. The left hilum is slightly higher and is square in shape, while the right is more V-shaped. Review the lung fields. Firstly, take a global perspective and compare the two lung fields for size and asymmetry. A discrepancy in size may indicate collapse of parts of the smaller one, or less commonly, localised hyperinflation of the larger one. If a change is detected, look for evidence of shift of the mediastinum, fissures or diaphragm, or crowding of the ribs. Typically the lungs look dark grey due to the small septa and blood vessels within the lung tissue. Compare one side with the other, one rib space at a time, to detect areas of difference. Look for areas where the lungs are both too light and too dark. Finally, carefully examine the pleural spaces. Look for a pneumothorax on the film. Also check for pleural fluid in the costophrenic angles or encroaching around the outside of the lung laterally. Carefully examine the cardiovascular structures from top to bottom, looking at the aortic knuckle, tracing the left heart border down to the diaphragm. The aortic knuckle, the left pulmonary artery, the concave left atrial appendage, and the convex left ventricle should be identified. Return to the top and follow down the right heart border, the superior vena cava, and then the right ventricle can be seen. The borders should be clearly demarcated. Next, consider the position of the mediastinal structures. Approximately two-thirds of the heart lie to the left of the midline. If the film is erect, PA, properly centred and properly inspired, the maximal horizontal diameter of the heart should be less than half of that of the thoracic ratio. In ICU practice, these conditions are rarely uniformly met, so caution must be exercised in judging cardiac enlargement. Briefly revisit the aorta. Is it too wide? Trace it inferiorly to the level of the diaphragm. Check the position and the shape of the diaphragms. The right should sit one to two centimetres above the left. Look carefully at their appearance. Can you see all of it? Is it blurry? Is it particularly clear? All of these can indicate pathology. Look also for air under the diaphragms, which may indicate visceral perforation. Examine the equipment visible on the film, checking its position where necessary. Endotracheal, intercostal and nasogastric tubes, central venous lines and prosthetic devices should all be identified. Remember that some equipment may be external to the patient. Carefully examine the soft tissues. Look for breasts and note if there has been a mastectomy. Nipple shadows can sometimes cause confusion. Look below the diaphragm for the stomach bubble and any signs of abdominal organ enlargement. Check the soft tissues around the chest for abnormalities including air. Look in the neck for soft tissue masses, goiter and subcutaneous emphysema. Examine all the bones for presence of abnormalities, including the spine. Take a second look at the apices, behind the heart, 
and the costophrenic angles. Occasionally pathology can hide here. You should always continue your review to the end of this structure, even if you find a noteworthy abnormality. Remember, there may be more. The review of the chest x-ray in ICU begins with an assessment of the quality of the film, focusing on position, inspiration, exposure and centering. A structured review of the film has been suggested using the A, B, C, D, E's as a cue. These focus attention progressively on the airways, breathing structures, cardiovascular structures, diaphragms and equipment. Soft and hard tissues outside the thorax should be carefully examined and a final review of common places for missed pathology conducted. A structured approach will maximise the information that you can gain from this vital examination. The videos that follow this one will review common pathology found in ICU chest x-rays.